Hello, I'm Michael and I wanted to put together a video to explain the why, the what and the how of our new heat pump installation. Now, it's worth just saying, there are lots of much better, more detailed and way more knowledgeable videos by people who actually install these things. But I just wanted to put one together from the perspective of somebody who has absolutely no idea what they're doing and really didn't know where to start, me. So let's start with the why. Why an air source heat pump? Well, we live in a village with no access to mains gas. So most houses here use oil delivered on a tanker like this, or gas delivered uh, and stored in canisters. Now we want an oil, which when we moved in, we vowed to remove within the next 10 to 15 years. Fast forward to uh, the mate just gone, and having ordered an oil top up, the tanker arrives and refuses delivery, just really due to there being some hairline cracks in our tank, meaning that there would be a new one to 2,000 pound tank, and while we're at it, a new boiler as ours broke down a couple of times last winter. So we did the maths, and we calculated that it would absolutely be cheaper just to replace all of it like for like, um, over getting an air source heat pump, like, £5,000 just to replace a, a boiler and a tank and anything from seven to £15,000 to go for an air source heat pump. So yeah, why did we go for an air source heat pump? Well, it definitely wasn't to save money and as you'll say, see later, it definitely wasn't to save time. Predictably, it was for the, let's be honest, absolutely futile reason of trying to save the planet. Honestly, I know it's like trying to cool the ocean. No, it's like trying to cool the ocean while somebody is sat next to you pouring in boiling water. So yeah, absolutely futile. Also, it's because air source heat pumps, uh, well, heat pumps actually, just in general, are so poorly understood. Big heat pump have the absolute worst PR team. And I feel like I'm on a one man mission to change that perception one heat pump at a time. Let me give you an example, right? So our village is awash with fossil fuel heated homes where fossil fuel is delivered by fossil fuel powered trucks. Everyone I've spoken to about our plans uh, to put in a heat pump has definitely raised an eyebrow and either told me it'll be too cold or of so-and-so who had to rip it out and replace it with an oil boiler. So yeah, we wanted to be the guinea pigs. And we, I guess we saw a bar. So that's the why. Definitely, definitely not a cost. More some sort of futile altruism. Right then, let's get to the what and the how. So we knew that we wanted an air source heat pump over say a ground source heat pump due to <laughs> just how cheap and quick it would be to install. A bit of foreshadowing there. Anyway, I stumbled upon this, the Daikin Altherma, Altherma 3HHT, catchy name, uh, where the HT stands for high temperature. Oh, and uh, did I mention heat pumps run colder than gas or oil boilers? It's probably worth a, a quick and simple heat pump lesson. So, in its most simple form, heat pumps work by sucking in heat from the outside air, which then heats a liquid refrigerant. This refrigerant is then compressed, which in turn increases the temperature of the refrigerant as temperature and pressure are directly proportional if you remember your GCSE physics. This refrigerant is then used to heat up the water in here, which is then pumped into the house to warm up radiators, hot water, etc. It sort of sounds like magic and it sort of is. Based on various sources, gas and oil boilers are around 90 to 95 percent efficient there or thereabouts, whereas heat pumps can be anything from 200 to 300, sometimes 400% efficient, depending on weather conditions. That is to say, for every kilowatt hour of energy put in, a gas or an oil boiler will give you around 0.9 uh, kilowatt hours of heat energy back, whereas a heat pump will give you two to three, again, sometimes even four. So what's the catch? Well, the catch is that much like electric cars, efficiency plays a massive part. Gas and oil boilers, where efficiency doesn't really matter, usually has a flow temperature, the flow temperature basically being how hot the water in the pipes in your house is, of around 70 degrees. These boilers are usually firing up, switching off, firing up, switching off, firing up, switching off, just to maintain that desired temperature. And the difference between how hot you're in the room and how hot the water in the radiators is, is so big, it means that even with tiny radiators, 
drafty rooms or lots of heat just being lost due to poor insulation, it's really easy to keep your rooms warm, even if you are basically just paying to heat the garden. So onto heat pumps. Typical flow temperatures are much lower, around 40 to 45 degrees for heating the home and anything up to 55 degrees for your domestic hot water. And unlike its oil and gas counterparts, the aim is to keep it running constantly rather than just regularly clicking it on and off. And this is way more efficient. So what does it actually mean in practice? Well, it means that the radiators have to work harder to heat rooms as the radiators are significantly colder and it can take a little longer, sometimes actually quite a bit longer, to warm a room compared to a gas or an oil boiler. But because it stays on for longer, the room eventually warms up and just stays warm. And this is where this efficiency thing comes in, because it's all about trying to keep as much of this heat in as possible. So for example, bigger radiators, good insulation, double glazing, really anything that you can do to keep the heat inside means that either your room stays warmer for longer, or, and this is the big one, you can run your flow temperature even cooler. So why would you wanna run your flow temperature even cooler? Well, as mentioned before, your heat pump is amplifying the heat in the air. So the colder it is outside, the more energy it needs to use to maintain the same temperature inside your home. If you can run the heat pump a bit colder, then you'll use a bit less energy to keep the same temperature. Which, well, perhaps more importantly, added over lots of days, weeks or years, adds up to saved energy and, by extension, saving money. So, in summary, air source heat pumps are magic boxes that heat water. That hot water is a little less hot than the things that burn stuff, which means you need to work a bit harder to keep the heat in. The colder that the magic box can operate, the cheaper it is to run. Oh, and by the way, if you're on one of those green tariffs or if you plan to run your heat pump off solar on a battery, then basically it's all powered by clean energy, whatever clean energy means. Okay, so back to the high temperature heat pump. We decided on this Daikin model because unlike heat pumps everywhere, this one can operate at, get this, up to 70 degrees flow temperature, meaning that if we wanted to, we could actually run at the same or similar temperature as a gas or oil boiler. Of course, as above, the aim is to run as cold as possible, but being the first people we know to get one with lots of people telling us horror stories about their neighbors, brothers, mates, first cousin putting one in and then having to rip it out after a freezing winter, we wanted to make sure we'd at least have the option of being able to crank it up um, so we could stay warm. So that's what we decided to do. Almost certainly the wrong way to do it, but there we go, we did it anyway. So next we had to find somebody to install it for us, to literally take our money and oh my goodness, why is it so hard to find somebody to install this? Anyway, after lots of failed starts, many unanswered emails and phone calls, we found a company who I won't name to install it for us. And I guess, I guess it's so hard to find people who know how to install air source heat pumps because there just aren't that many people who can install them, whereas there are probably lots of people who can install gas or oil boilers. So yeah, we had a bit of a interesting pre-sales experience with this particular company. Maybe that's a video for another day, but long story, very long story short, uh, and after a bit, actually quite a bit of back and forth, they came out to do a site survey and it was decided that we'd put an outdoor unit right here and have all the other bits over here, basically, inside the garage with a very well insulated pipe running under my feet uh, across the driveway to connect them both. Now, in fairness to the company, once they'd come out and talked us through everything and this whole process, we did feel much, much more assured of our mad plan to put in a heat pump. But again, as we don't know anyone who has one of these, we really needed lots of reassurance, which in fairness to them, they did eventually get. So this option is what's called a split unit and it separates the whole heat pump process into two. Um, so you have an outdoor unit, which houses the compressor and some other random bits. And then the indoor unit, which um, also known as a hydro box, which houses the pump plus all the electronics. Um, there is the option of a mono block where everything is contained in a single outdoor unit. Um, but the advantage of a split unit like this, which I might add isn't unique to these guys, um, uh, but other companies do it. Anyway, the advantage is that the outdoor unit is quieter, it's often a bit more efficient, and there's an element of flexibility as to where the outdoor unit, unit can go, like we did, we, we put it here. 
The disadvantage is that it's more expensive and complicated to install. And, um, but we, we picked this split option because we were worried about noise, but we also wanted to put the outdoor unit uh, in the same place that our existing oil tank was, literally right here. Tucked out of the way, not too visible from the road. Um, but it did mean we had to dig a big trench across our driveway to run a pipe. So let's talk about the install. How did we do it and how did it go? Well, first up, we had to get our loft re-insulated. Here in the UK, there's this grant from the government to install a heat pump. It's seven and a half thousand pounds, although 5,000 pounds when we did it, frustrating, um, which you can put towards uh, an air source heat pump. As long as there are, let me quote here, no recommendations to install loft or cavity wall insulation, which ours annoyingly did. So we had to do that first. Again, way more complicated than it needed to be as we used our loft for storage. So we had to get the company to physically raise our floor by about 15 centimeters so they could put insulation uh, between the boards. Anyway, we got it done. And having done that, we were then able to get the whole thing installed. And we had to, in as short a space of time as possible, safely dispose of the tank and the oil, uh, have a massive trench dug without damaging any of the water, sewage or power, and then get everything installed. All while crossing our fingers that we weren't about to enter a cold snap. Oh, and uh, the electricity company who owns our network, also known as our DNO, had to come and check that our supply was able to cope with the additional power that this can actually draw. Now, the tank removal and disposable was actually pretty easy, to be honest, and the trench, although I was super nervous, was actually fairly straightforward, and the electricity company uh, gave us a thumbs up. But then came installation day. Okay, so the salary would be that the installation mostly went without a hitch. But unlike a gas or an oil boiler, the whole install took five days as the install required a few additional steps, namely laying this massive pipe, uh, putting in a new consumer unit, the, you know, the, the, the electricity switchboard, because ours didn't have enough space, um, putting in a new water tank, still not really sure uh, exactly why we need to replace our old tank anyway, uh, putting in seemingly miles of new pipework, um, adding thermostatic radiator valves, uh, TLVs, to the radiators that didn't have them, uh, and physically replacing one of our radiators. Uh, so it took quite a bit of work and we ended up not having central heating for about 10 days, although we did have hot water because they actually just prioritized replacing the tank first. Next was setup. And it's worth just saying, there are far better, far more comprehensive videos elsewhere detailing the best way to set up an air source heat pump. But the principles are this. Domestic hot water is warmed when the electricity is cheap at night and uh, at a temperature that gives you just enough warm water for your needs. For central heating, a weather compensation curve is used, which essentially changes the flow temperature, you know, the, the, the temperature of the water flowing through your radiators and around your house. Um, and that's based on how cold it is outside, just to make sure the house is warm enough. So when it's warmer outside, we have a flow temperature of around 35 degrees. And then there's a sliding curve to minus two degrees outside when the flow temperature is then 45 degrees. The idea being that the colder it is outside, the quicker the house cools down. So it's all, it's all pretty clever stuff. Now, um, these temperatures were calculated when the survey was done by the installer, and it will be different for every house. But as mentioned above, the aim of the game here is to get the temperatures down to as low as possible while maintaining a comfortable temperature in the house. This bit will need tweaking over the coming months and years, but eventually we'll settle into a, the perfect curve for our house. So, to summarise, what are we left with? Well, we have a fully installed system, which supplies plenty of hot water, uh, heated at night on a cheap electricity tariff. The heating works, it's clicked on a few times, but to be honest, it's not yet really got cold enough to properly test it. But it is easy to tell that the radiators are warm and toasty and not that sort of scalding hot as they were before. Um, and I know how to adjust the temperature just to make sure we're not freezing this winter. So that's my summary. I hope this video has been helpful and hopefully it provided a little bit of an overview as to what it's like to install an air source heat pump. Um, sorry if I got some of these facts wrong. Um, but if you do have any questions or if you want any more information, do leave them in the comments section below and I'll 
do my best to try and answer them. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.